Look at those devil tines. It's crazy, dude. That back end is nuts. <laughs> Sorry, so Look at that freaking thing! He is ancient! What do you got, baby? It's a moose battle! What is up? So, today's video is going to be a little bit different than my regular stuff. I'm still going out shed hunting. Actually, this is my third spot today because the other two spots I drove to and there's just too much snow. It's May 20th and that's freaking weird, but it is what it is. So, we're going to go hit some low country. And I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about um, something that I didn't even know growing up and a lot of people still don't know is that moose and elk and deer shed their antlers on a yearly basis. So they'll just fall off their heads and then they grow, grow new ones. And it's, it's because of the testosterone. So the rut is in the fall and after the rut, so during the rut, their testosterone is the highest it can be. And then after that, in the winter, their testosterone drops so low, and that's when they're the weakest, and their antlers actually fall off because of that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get out in the hills with my dogs today and kind of explain a little bit more about how elk and deer work and and all that. So stay tuned. Dad's right. Nice buck. He's super tall. Looks like he was getting close to shedding if you see if you look really close right here there's cracks coming along his bases which means this is probably definitely a, a winter kill he was in his winter in his winter area when he uh, passed but um so yeah it's one of those things that happens to a lot of deer and elk during the winter when their testosterone is just so low they just don't have hardly any energy and the best time for the predators to get them and Looks like that could have happened on his snout is smashed a little bit. It's like a mountain lion could have got him. No way to know for sure though. Anyways. Bro, what is that baby? You got an elk spike? All right guys, this is a an elk spike. So this is a yearling elk, a one year old elk that they drop super late in the, or in the winter, early spring, usually at the end of April or May. Anyways, sweet. Maybe we'll find some other stuff, some maybe a couple big, a little bit bigger ones, so I can show you kind of the age progression. All right, guys. I didn't know if I was gonna be able to get in one for you or not. I found that little brown spike just barely, but um, got one. So I'll film it. I'll pick it up for you. It's over there. Tell you a little bit about it. So this is a brown five-point elk shed. So that last one I found was a yearling. And this bull is probably three years old, maybe. I would say about three years old. So he's still a really young bull, still growing a lot. But um, this one would probably, you know, drop around mid-April most of the time. This year they dropped, oh, every, everything dropped late pretty much. But so we're just up here in these elks, this elks wintering area and just trying to figure them out. So hopefully we can find a couple more. All right, guys. So, haven't had much luck this afternoon. I did find that one spike in that one brown shed, about three-year-old five-point, um, which will be good for dog chews. Found another one that'll be good for dog chews. Here, I'll pick it up for you. I think this bull is probably a four-year-old bull. So, now you can kind of see. Sorry, just gotta get it angled right. There you go. You can kind of see that uh, what the difference is. So that five point was just a little bit smaller than this one. It had a little bit smaller base. So their base gets a little bit bigger every year and their antlers usually get a little bit bigger every year too. So, But this is a dang perfect one for dog chews. Dogs just love these things. So good for them. Just full of nutrients. It's getting dark. Hopefully I can get my way out of here before I can't see anything. <laughs> so yesterday I went on a little shed hunt with the dogs in the afternoon and talked about why deer and elk shed their antlers on a yearly basis and then grow new ones. And I found a couple different years. So I found like a three-year-old bull, 
a yearling bull and then about a four-year-old bull yesterday and today I'm going to show you the age progression the best I can from a yearling to a mature bull and from a young buck to a mature buck. So here we go. Okay, we will we'll go over deer first. So this is the lineup we got. So right here we got a yearling buck, this little spike. You can see how little teeny his base is. And then as, as they get older, they get just a little bit bigger year by year and their bases get a little bit bigger. And um, until they mature into a, a nice mature buck. And this is, see, he's starting to mature now. And then this is actually the same buck the next year, these two. So you can kind of see the progression there. And then they can end up being just monsters, <laughs> depending on their genetics. So they can go from this big to that big. Base size is pretty crazy. So in the deer species, there's two things mainly that determine antler growth is genetics and available food. And so as you can see, this buck is a year older than this buck probably, but this buck has a lot more potential, a lot better genetics. Um, he could be a, a monster. He's already a five point and he's probably only a two year old buck. So that's just kind of the difference in between what genetics can, the role genetics can play. All right, now onto my favorite species of the deer family, <clears throat> the elk. So right here we got the, the yearling spike that I found yesterday. Um, this is a one-year-old bull elk. Um, when they drop their first antlers, this is what it looks like usually. And then when they grow back that, that same year, they turn into a two-year-old bull elk, and this is about, about what it looks like as a two-year-old bull. Um, obviously, genetics plays a role, so it can look something, you know, something like this, or something even like this. Those are both two-year-old bulls. So. And then on to the three-year-old bull elk. This is the brown five-point I found yesterday. As you can see, year by year, their bases just get a little bit bigger. So, and then as they start to mature, they just get a little bit bigger. Here's what, probably about a four-year-old bull elk starting to turn into a six-point. Your typical mature bull elk is a six-point. Obviously, genetics play a role, so it could be bigger than that or smaller. So we go from the four-year-old to about the five-year-old. You see the difference a little bit? Just keeps getting bigger. Bases get a little bit bigger. You got your, about your five-year-old. This is when they really, six and seven is when they really start to become mature bulls. So right here, this could be a six, seven-year-old plus bull elk. Um, in the wild, they can live up to you know 12 years, but once they hit about seven years old is when they reach their peak of maturity and they stay about the same. They'll still fluctuate a little bit, but um, yeah, so they can get to that and then they can turn into something like, something like this. This is one of the heaviest sheds I've ever found. And um, as you can tell, this is probably an old bull, big base on him. And, just a very mature bull elk. So like you said, this is the typical six point. Turn into something like this though. Throw all sorts of character on when they get, when they get older. This is an inline seven with a kicker. So this is an eight point bull elk. Anyways. Hope you guys learned a little bit about elk and deer and in the video I'll be posting some descriptions of of words, keywords that I use that might you might not understand like the rut and stuff like that. So hope you guys learned a lot about what I love to do and that's look for deer and elk sheds. <laughs>